controlled and Lucien's at another location. So um, here, um, so if there isn't the direct communication, we have to figure how that's going to work. But the thing is, um, we're still live. It's just uh, even remote has been gone remote. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's amazing what technology can do. So anyways, uh, we're going to go through the broadsword, go through some parts of the form that you may have some trouble with. Hopefully, uh, we get the same people watching and same people watching. I uh, hope you've progressed a bit with the form, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay. So as I said, don't overgrip the sword. Uh, when we move, it's just like we're doing the form. It's just an extension of the body. Uh, we have this apparatus, and we're controlling the movement based on angular positions, vertical, horizontal, oblique, slants, or diagonals. Uh, the body form is important. Uh, the leg work is what ties together with the uh, weapon. So just like in the Tai Chi uh, empty hand form, you have the same principles and concepts. So, uh, you know, one time I was at a, an event and they had a lot of Kung Fu swords and the judges there were not familiar with Tai Chi, so they were asking me um, what the difference is. So mainly it's the execution and the speed and timing of the movement. Although there's timing in the Kung Fu, it's a little bit uh, different as far as the, the intrinsic part of the motion, which is much more integrated in the Tai Chi, or at least uh, more difficult to cheat. And part of that is uh, because it's done slowly. So when you do things fast, sometimes um, things can be uh, executed, but it happens so fast that um, you don't know for sure if everything is moving correctly. So anyways, on that note, we're going to go through the opening as usual. Last week, I went to the middle of the form and went backwards. So let's go here, start up. Here's your neutral. We go forward, back, turn the corner, and we're here. Grasp the sparrow's tail. Single whip. Change hands, we grab the sword, we push up, we step in, and we step out. Step out, go to the side, so we're toward the mirror here, then we're into the corner. Hook your wrist, this is your hook wrist hand. Sit back, push the sword forward, and then we're coming over the top. We come underneath, and we're going to uppercut. And that goes right up vertical to here. Turn. Stab with the sword blade up. Flips down. Flip the sword. Turn. And poke. Turn in this direction. Kick up. The foot goes up. Switch the feet. And you stab. Slice around. Over the head, lean into the stance, come to center, bring the sword to here, over, and down. Lift up, switch feet, and poke. Slice around, over the head, sit back, lift the knee, heel kick. Bring the sword down on the left side. Push the sword forward. And here's the over the top. Okay. And we... Okay, let's try that again. After we do this, we push forward. Waist cut. Go forward. And now we go under. Over the top. Under cut. And then we're here. Okay, so just in case I confuse you, when we're here, heel kick, push forward. We should actually do a waist cut, not over the top. So you're going over, and then I step forward to poke down over the top here. And then we move in this direction, 
cut up into the horse stance, set up your legs, go back to center. So everything is kind of working off your center line. Now we're back here. We turn. That was a 180 degree turn. We poke down. We go over the top, undercut, and slice. Down, poke, sit back to neutral on your center line, push forward, sit back, forward, step up, and poke. Okay, over the top, cut to the waist. Okay. Cut to the waist, over the top, around, vertical chop down on your center line, back to here, and we catch the sword here. Sliding step, one, two, three, four, turn, facing the opposite way from the side we started, we're here. This goes over the top, one, two, three, one, two, three, poke down, lift up, cut to the waist, slice around, over the top again, one, Okay, two, okay, so let's try that again. So when we're here, one, two, three, turn over the top, back to the same side. The left foot, it goes forward. We retreat, step back, cut to the waist. That goes to the left, spin. Spin. Now we're facing this way, and we step forward and poke. Adjust the feet, face the mirror, adjust this one more time. Take us to the back corner, poke down, open, up weight. So you, you're lifting the body here, up, chop down. And then we're back to here. And we push forward. Okay, so we'll, let's try that move again. So we just spun around. We're here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, diagonal flying. And then we're here, and this is the, the nodding, and we'll, we'll go over that again. So once we're here, we start the right, left, right, left. Turn, and we're on this side. Okay, we try that again. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you sort of... Just marching, but this is in place. This is stepping forward. One, two, three, four. So this is in place. One, two, three, four. This is marching. One, two, three, four. And we turn. Okay, so we see what we did there. Once we poke here and we chop. We poke down, sit back, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, then we step up and chop. Sit back, this would be a downward posture, and then we, so that's a deflection, then we're going to step up and chop. 
poke, sit, then push it forward, level the sword, bring it over the top, chop to the neck, come to center, and open. Okay, so we're going to come to center, and you can see it's just like this. Top to the neck, come back to center, one, okay, two, three, so we're here. This is just done one time, back to here, this goes on the arm, we go opposite, and poke, and here we worked on this before, you go to your right. You go to your left, you go to your right, we're back toward the center in that corner, okay, one, two, then we're over here, three, four. Take a step back, cut, find this position, knee up, one, two, Slice across, turn the sword. So we're going to slice across, turn the sword. Now this foot's going under, up. This left sword is going like this. Bring the foot down. Take it over the top and chop. Take it over to this, this side. Left hand. Back to the right. This is almost like what we did earlier. We're going like this, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Okay, deep breathing. Inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale, inhale, exhale. So, you know, sequence is sequence. We just have to go through it, work it out, and sort of memorize it. But it's really, uh, you just have to do it over and over again. And because I said that there's a lot of common spaces in the form where you, uh, common posture transitions that could get, you could get mixed up very easily with this form. So it's uh, something that you have to do from beginning to end enough to kind of get that layout of the form and you know keep reviewing it. And eventually it kind of sinks in and um, you can get through the whole thing. So let's go from the beginning again. So we start off with preparation and then we move forward and back. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just counting. To pace, it's not really a real count. It's just creating a motion as a tempo. Slice around. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. 
six, essentially it's like every beat is sort of a, a count for something to happen when you move. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so that's the whole sequence. You know, there's a lot of minute adjustments when you learn or after you learn the form that you have to build into your uh, execution. But a lot of those things are very subtle, and the discovery of that is really part of um, the time element and also how much you practice and how coordinated your body becomes and aware. Because, you know, when I speak of spatial awareness and proprioception and all these things, you know, they're terms, but, you know, it isn't always interpreted or digested in the body um, until it's ready. It's one of those um, unique things that um, sort of the human body adapts, but it can only adapt uh, to the information it's fed, and it can only adapt to the information it's fed and understood in the body. So there is a, a step beyond just memory. It's actually uh, rewiring your body, essentially, building more complex um, sequence of events. So if you look at it as uh, you know, building more uh, synapses in your, in your uh, program, that's exactly what's happening because you know, the muscle fibers have to be firing at a certain um, speed in a certain order. So that's really what I find pretty interesting because a lot of people don't understand especially someone that doesn't think along these lines, understands that that's what happens. You know, teachers in the old days just, just, just keep practicing, keep doing it. But, you know, a lot of times 
if you don't understand why you would just keep doing it, what actually happens, uh, it's hard to um, associate that you're physically not capable of doing something when you're so mentally intelligent. So that's just really something that's, um, for some people, hard to accept sometimes. So, you know, it's, some people are specifically uh, gifted. Some people have more discipline than others. And really it comes down to whether you like it or not. If you have a passion for doing this type of thing, that's what makes you get through um, the difficult stages of the th or the thresholds to allow you to achieve. So, and you know, achievement in something like this isn't as important unless you're competing. But for self-cultivation, I think it's something that just helps stimulate your interest and motivates you to uh, continue to do something because you like it. You know, that's how it is with um, you know people that have uh, you know certain things that are their hobbies. If it becomes your profession, it's another thing because now you have to even think on a different uh, scope completely because now you have to transfer what you're learning or learned into someone else's head, which is really um, something that becomes uh, another skill, actually, as a teacher. So anyways, if you have any questions, um, you know, we'll address those next time, I guess. This time... Uh, I'll just go over some of the things that I think we should emphasize, which is the, the suspended stance. Let's find that position. If you look from the side, it's essentially horizontal. The depth of the stance will vary based on the strength in your legs. Um, because Tai Chi is adaptable, you know, you can actually, as long as you're uh, coordinated and shifting your weight, you should be okay. And then we have this position where this hand is like a willow palm and this sword is here. So there's a balance. You don't want the sword here when you're like that because it's a little bit tense. This is much more relaxed because it's hanging here. Your slices, if it's in the neck area, it should, come down. it should come down slightly like this and like this. Not too flat and don't, actually don't, Articulate the sword motion out here. Get it from the arm and the body. So when I turn, if I turn in this direction, my torso rotates. If I come to here and I take a step, I turn. So this is my stance. This is my body form. If I come to here and I want my body to go there, I step to here. Now my hips have to adjust, my torso has to turn, my spine has to rotate, and my feet even have to adjust because I can't leave it like that. I have to turn it. If I sit back, then that allows me to move this foot. Okay. So if I shift forward, that allows me to move this foot. If I step out to here, now I'm in a position, now I have to transition across, bring my body over that leg, and I come into here, and I'm stroking across again. But if I'm here, okay, and I'm leaning like this, for me to go to that corner, I have to shift my weight. I have to move this foot and then drop into that center. So you should look like this over here. And then I take a step forward, and I poke. But then I drop. Relax. So that adds a dimension movement. So when you're here, if you just go like that, it becomes somewhat physical. So the difference is that you have to create the motion. So softening the movement has to do with how you manipulate your skeleton. So if I'm like this and I want to create the next motion, I have to create an action. I have to sink and sort of recreate that motion as a as an action, but it's not, then it becomes more like you just turn your hand over. It doesn't in, incorporate the rest of your body. If I'm turning to here, and I lead with this hand, and I follow with this, I come to here, and I separate the hands, and then I combine the hands, and I thrust, that becomes more of an integration of your 
your right and left sides, not to mention the upper lower coordination. So where do you see the upper lower coordination? Well, if I move this way, there's my right and left. My right and left and my lower coordination because I'm sinking. So upper body and legs are tied together. I'm moving. But at the same time, when something happens below, something happens above. So I'm slicing, now I'm in this position. Something happens below, something happens above. I'm dropping into the stance, but I'm dropping the sword as well. Then I sit back, and then I turn. I don't just put my hand here and pull. That's what, when you're first learning it, you should remember, well, I'll put my hand behind the sword, push the sword forward, lean. All the, so all those things you're thinking about on this conscious level, but at the same time, you're not paying attention to all the things that has to happen as a transition in a, in a specific space. That's your spatial awareness, proprioception, and all of that. So once you understand, well, I turn and I connect with the back of the sword, and then it starts to become part of that movement. And then when I sit back, it becomes part of this movement or this movement. So really, you're setting up your body, preparing for the transition, execute, but not make it so physical, um, driving it from the mind, directing it in a direction, and finding you know, the reference point that you're going. So a reference point, here's your middle. There's your middle. There's your middle. Right? Here's your high. Here's your chop. Is it here, here, or here? We have one here. That's the one in that corner. When we go to that corner, then we come back to center. So from here to drop here. So when you drop and then lift, it creates sort of a buoyancy. It starts to become like a wave. So the wave of the movement becomes something that becomes much more gentle and soft because you can create in the action and you make the space. You create the spatial part of that to create the fullness and movement. So what is that fullness? It's really volume. The volume and movement are dimensional. So you have to build those dimensional changes into your movement and at the same time you're building an awareness and um, sort of uh, controlling what is within the parameters of that space. So that's really something that is uh, part of practicing and the feeling and discovery. So the feeling is really part of proprioception and how your, your system picks up on that, just like standing shoulder width or if this is 50, 45 degrees or you're in a toe or the heel or where you shift your weight becomes part of an experience through feeling and sensitivity. So that ties into your timing and movement and how this part has to move with this part, how this part moves with this part, how this leads and this follows, how this leads and this follows like this, how they come together and they find that position, how they split and separate here. So these are all terms that you might hear when I teach the class on separation, combine and separate, open and close, rise and fall. Rise and fall, when we, when we fall, when we go like this, when we sink and rise and turn, when we go up and down, up and down, all of these become tied together. So look at that movement, how it appears to be soft. It's soft because I'm tying it to my legs. And then you separate, you separate. How do you create these actions so that it looks like it's effortless and seamless? And in fact, it is almost effortless, effortless because you take out the physicality. Take out the physical side of it, you're still moving, you have good circulation, your neurons are still firing, and you're building tremendous integration of body. So what's better than that for over? overall well-being, it's really tremendous. So it's something you can struggle with to, to
to get to a certain stage, but you know that's become something that uh, is is almost poetic in a sense that it just is very fluid. So yeah. on that note, I think um, we're almost there. But the thing is, it's an apparatus. It has its benefits, and it's interesting uh, for many many people that um, you know have gotten through. Uh, the long form and what you've been doing with Tai Chi because um, you start to discover well, there's something pretty amazing about human movement and integration of body and having something that you can use to develop you know, the total being which is really these sequences. You know, without these sequences, where would you be? You would just have a bunch of things that are just housed here but they don't have any rhyme or reason. Once you put into a sequence and you integrate these movements, it becomes um, a totally different uh, approach to what you're learning. But that's the, I guess, the the systematized, the systematic way of learning something that you can cultivate for a long, long time. And um, you know, it's uh, it to me, it's been something that's uh, wonderful, and to me, it's something that I think it's a tr uh, tremendous value. Um, you know, just for you know, the human being. So on that note, I'll see you next time and uh, keep up the good work. Subscribe. Uh, if you're interested, we, we have the, um, the Patreon that we're rolling out and, you know, with the way things are right now, the social distancing and um, the live brick and mortar isn't as, uh, as uh, 